Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about plug and play devices. Now I've always been interested in these things and I have quite a few of them, so hopefully we'll be looking at those in a series of videos on my channel. But anyways, first off, what is a plug and play device? Some of you might not be familiar with that term, so plug and plays, they kind of came around, uh, I would say around like the 2000s or so, and uh, what it is is a little console that is kind of self-contained, and uh, that really ends up being the definition of what a plug and play device is. I have pretty much three criteria that I use to decide whether something's a plug and play or not. The first thing, it plugs up directly to your TV. And in this case, the classic plug and plays, as I would say, or old school plug and plays, whatever you want to call it, uh, they have the composite output to the TV right here. So it doesn't have anything else that, uh, it doesn't have any adapter or, you know, AV cord that uh, that comes with it. It just plugs directly from here to your TV and usually it just has one audio input. It doesn't have left and right. It usually just has one. So unfortunately the sound is usually mono. But um, either way, so it just happens like this, just old-fashioned cables. Next, it usually has its own self-contained power. So you see this thing, it actually uses four triple A's and um, so yeah it doesn't require a wall outlet or anything it already comes with its own power supply and once the batteries go out your game goes out and lastly there is no cartridge input so whichever games are preloaded on here those are the games that you're stuck with there's no way to add games to it or anything like that every now and then i'll see a plug and play device that has an sd card reader with it but typically the games that are on here those are the ones that you're stuck with now this actually is not the first plug and play device that we've had on here if you guys have been paying attention to my criteria, we have had another one, and that was the Game Stick. When I really think about it, the Game Stick is a plug-and-play device, because they're made for convenience, and that's one of the reasons why they're called plug-and-plays. You just plug it up to your TV, and then you're ready to start playing it. And that really does embody what the Game Stick was all about, because, of course, you just plug that into your TV. Uh, it does not require any power input, because it gets it from the HDMI out, um, assuming that you do have the powered HDMI and it also does not have any cartridge slot or anything. I assure you download the games from online so theoretically you should be able to get more games on there but really it doesn't have a cartridge input so you're stuck with whatever is on the GameStick store. I'm fascinated by everything weird in the gaming industry and I think that a lot of that fascination goes also into plug and plays because really anything goes. The bar for admission is so low because these things are so cheap to make that really you can have any plug and play that you want. Also a lot of the hardware usually it's licensed from you know 8-bit uh, companies from back in the day you know Sega or uh, usually often in the times of Nintendo or Famicom the hardware is borrowed shall we say <laughs> and then that's how they're able to keep the cost down and so you'll notice that a lot of these do use 8-bit graphics including this one and uh, that's because it's just so cheap to make them and so really anything goes the bar for admission is very low there's not really a standard you know for this industry and that really makes some amazing things come out all right so let's talk about this plug and play that i have this is one of the first ones i ever bought i think i well i know i got it at like a thrift store or something for 2.99 and so again these things are very cheap people just play them and then throw them away and there's not really a lot to talk about right here i mean it's just a very generic one i think this is one of the first ones made though because it doesn't really have any branding and I could tell from the design that it's not one of the later ones that was made. Also you'll see that there really isn't any branding on it. Um, the only thing that it says is TV plug and play. How more generic can you get? Now the controls are not very good. They're hard plastics and the D-pad is actually really really tough to use. Um, it's kind of inaccurate and also the plastic edges are really kind of sharp and so that really messes with your thumb especially this especially this little part on the part in the middle that bulges out that part it really 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 grinds away at your thumb now it has left right x y a b that those are way too many buttons for such a simple device uh, it also has select and reset of course here's the power on and it says made in China and that's it I don't really know a lot more about this thing but uh, either way it does its thing and uh, you just plug it in turn it on and then instantly you get your video image on there so let's take a look at the games already the first game is Aether Kavas I don't know if that's saying it right 
It starts off with a kid hitting a gong. I don't know what that's all about. And then it's the strangest thing. You realize that none of the buttons do anything. You try pressing all of them, and for a minute I thought that this thing was broken. Then I found out that you have to hit the emblem. That's actually the start button. It's strange, I know, but that's how I like my plug and plays. This game's a shoot 'em up. It's one of the most common types of games on the plug and plays. And for a shoot 'em up, this one isn't too bad. You fight enemies that look like helicopters, and your ship transforms into two different styles. Each one has its own strengths and weaknesses. In its default mode, it's pretty fast, but it handles terribly and it only fires one shot at a time. The other mode is a mech, which is a lot more agile, but it's also a bigger target for the enemy. However, the cannon does auto-fire. You switch between these modes by pressing A and back on the D-pad. But then I found out that if you press A and up on the D-pad just right, it'll transform into a third form. This third form is the best of both worlds. It's fast, it's agile, the cannon auto-fires, and it's a small target for the enemy. After you find this form, the other forms are unnecessary. And apparently your character or the ship is called Ares. You also have a special weapon, but it's useless because it just scatters shots everywhere and it doesn't hit anything. Of course, this didn't come with an instruction manual, so I have to try to figure out the game as I go along. So what you have to do is survive the first section, and then you go into some sort of an enemy base. Play up. What the hell? When you get into the base, you have to survive until the timer runs out, then you get to the boss. The boss is easy, all you have to do is shoot these tiles right here in the middle, and after you defeat them, the screen goes all Atari on you. The game resets, and I played through a few rounds, and it seems like the game just repeats itself. The game does get a little bit more difficult each time, and I was able to see one new type of enemy, but nothing else really seemed to change. The next game is Conti NG. This game is just a knockoff of Load Runner. Clones are a huge problem on plug and plays. You just don't see a lot of innovation because it's just easier to copy what's already been done. But it was easy to get the hang of this game, and I actually found myself enjoying it. Still, nothing special here. Next we have Hoodle. This is a pinball game, and once again we have control issues. I try all the buttons and all they do is flip the right paddle, then I realize the D-pad is the left paddle. I don't know what it is, but there's just something inherently wrong with playing an 8-bit version of pinball. I don't know, but it just really gets to me. Otherwise, it's not too bad, but it's hard to understand what's going on in this pinball machine. Why are there Metroids all over the place? And what's up with this bonus stage? Why am I controlling an elf on a skateboard? And what's with the other elf up there? I'm not big on real pinball machines either, so maybe it just doesn't make any sense to me, but it does to somebody else out there. Now we have Bounce. This is another knockoff. This time it's a knockoff of a game called Mappy. It's a pretty good copy of that game, but my favorite in the Mappy series has always been Mappy Land. I don't care so much about just regular Mappy. Again, not too bad. I had some fun with this one. Next we have Golgotha. This is a Bomberman clone where you fight against Squidbillies. I'll be honest, I suck at Bomberman, so this game isn't really my thing. The enemies are incredibly dumb, so at least it's not as frustrating as the other Bomberman games I've tried to play. Bomberman is a game about screwing everybody else over, so that's fun if you know how to play the game, and it's not so much fun for everybody else. I will admit though, it is fun when the gods have not been kind to your opponent. One of the things I wasn't prepared for is that the next level doesn't start after you defeat all the enemies on screen. I didn't know that you have to find the exit within the same time limit. So the first time I did it, I actually did find the exit, but with no time left to spare. Come on, come on, come on! No! What the hell was that? Does that happen in the real Bomberman too? And what's this? Is the game trolling me now? Did I mention I hate Bomberman? Good, cause we're moving on. UFO Race. This game is a copy of Super Hang On. One thing I do like is that you get a track map, so you actually know which turns are coming up. I also like when you crash because the ship goes BOOM, or BOMB, I don't know how you pronounce that. There also seem to be a lot of graphical glitches and, you know, flickers and pixels that just appear out of nowhere in this game, so it makes me wonder if the game is just badly programmed and they decided to give it a UFO setting so that that way nothing has to make sense. Oh well, nothing special here. Lastly, we have Bitha. Bitha is a clone of a game called Puyan. I've never been a fan of that game, so even if this is a decent copy, I don't really care for it. 
I really don't like how in the later levels there's some enemies that are indestructible. Look at this, how fair is that? Out of all the games, this is probably the one I enjoyed the least. So overall, this is a pretty good little plug and play. I like it that it's a very honest plug and play because some of the plug and plays that came out, if some of you are familiar with them, they would say they have like 2,000 games in one and that was complete bull. Everybody knew it. When they say that they have the, that many games in one, usually half of them are like a ripoff of Contra and it's just Contra with, you know, infinite machine gun or spread gun, something like that. This one though, it's very honest. It just has a few games on there. All the games are different from one another and really, that's what I like. It's just honest and that's something that you're going to see wore out very quickly with plug and plays. But by far the best game that was on here was that Aether Kavas game, and uh, that was the shoot 'em up that you saw at first, and that was just a great game. I kid you not, it has the makings of a very good game. I don't know if it was original. Like I said, a lot of the games that you saw there, they were clones, but that one, it seemed to be one that had the makings of a very good game. Um, it had a health bar, which I think every shoot 'em up should have. Your ship could transform, so that added a little bit of strategy right there. And I just thought it was altogether a really good game. If only they had given, you know, some more variety with enemies and some more variety in the environments, then that could actually be a really good game. But um, like I said, a lot of them were clones, and I was not able to identify whether that one was a clone of anything. So if any of you guys know which game that thing was a clone of, please let me know because I would love to see more of that. But then again, with kind of their weird little English that was going on and the way that it was just programmed, it kind of makes me think that maybe it was their own thing. And if so, that's one of the best ideas I've ever seen come out of these plug-and-play companies. But um, either way, so let me know if that actually is a clone of a game. And if so, I'd like to see more of it. And I hope to see you guys next time when we look at another plug-and-play. Have a good one, guys.